Be sure to click the notification button so you can stay up to date with all of our open source and TrueNAS videos. In this tutorial, we're going to go over setting a static IP address on your TrueNAS system. To learn how to install TrueNAS, make sure to check out our How to Install video below. The default network settings on TrueNAS will have DHCP enabled for your IP address. With DHCP, your IP address is dynamic and can change depending on your switcher router configuration on the network. Your IP will be in a range set by an IPv4 subnet mask. Setting up a static IP address can be a huge benefit in TrueNAS. For example, if you don't always have access to the system console or a monitor connected directly to your server, it can be difficult to obtain the IP address if it changes due to your network being reset or system being updated. Another reason is that you may want to keep your TrueNAS server IP bookmarked, so it can always be accessed through the same link, which is ideal for administering on multiple computers. In addition, a static IP allows TrueCommand to stay connected to your TrueNAS system with less potential for disruption due to IP changes. Now before configuring the network on your TrueNAS system, you should be familiar with the following network terminology. An interface. A network interface is a hardware or software component that functions as an interface between protocol layers in a computer network. It allows for passing messages between connected network devices. A NIC, short for Network Interface Controller, is a hardware device used to connect to a network. Generally, this is where your Ethernet port is. Otherwise, there's usually one built into the motherboard. IPv4, short for Internet Protocol Version 4. IPv4 is used worldwide and routes most of the internet traffic and utilizes a 32-bit address space. You will be configuring this later on on your TrueNAS system. IPv6, short for Internet Protocol version 6, a most recent version of the internet protocol. It utilizes a 128-bit address space. IPv6 introduces a new packet format to minimize packet header processing on routers. DHCP is short for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. DHCP is a network management protocol which allows your DHCP server, typically on your modem, router, or switch, to automatically assign a dynamic IP address to devices on your network. NetMask is a 32-bit mask to divide IP addresses into subnets, specifying available hosts on the network. Subnet Mask Submask, or simply subnet, is the logical subdivision of the IP network. Now, we'll show you how to get the static IP configured in both the console menu as well as the graphical user interface. Make sure you have a monitor and keyboard connected to your TrueNAS system. Once it's connected, wake up or refresh the screen by pressing the Enter key to display the setup console and IP address. Type in the number 1 and press Enter to configure the network. It will ask you to select the interface, such as IGB0 or IGB1, depending on how many Ethernet ports are on your machine. Choose the interface you want to configure by typing the number and pressing Enter. It may initially ask to delete the interface. Be careful not to delete your network interface as it may require additional troubleshooting. Choose No by typing N and pressing Enter. Next, it will ask to remove the current settings of this interface. If you choose Yes, it will reset the settings and restart your network access on that port. If you choose No, it will ask to configure the interface for DHCP. Here's where we change the IP from dynamic to static. Choose No by typing in N, then pressing Enter. It will ask to configure IPv4. Choose Yes. Now give your interface a unique name. The next step will allow you to set the unique IP address. It's recommended that you stick to the range that's in your available network or the default IP that was set. For example, if your network's set up 10.0.0.x, choose a unique number in that set. Another common range is 192.168.1.x. When you're done typing in an IPv4 address, press Enter. Next, we're going to set up the IPv4 netmask. The default value of 255.255.255.0, or slash 24, is recommended. This is the range your IP address can fall under. Next, it will ask to configure IPv6. Choose No. Most home networks are using IPv4, so you don't really need to worry about that. Next, it will ask to configure the failover settings. If you do not have another system set up as a mirror, you can ignore this. It's a high availability feature which we'll talk about in another video. 
Once you're done configuring this, the console should refresh and show the web user interface is at, followed by the new static IP address. Go to your web browser on a separate computer and navigate to this IP address to confirm that it is working. If your Chunaz GUI does not load, try rebooting the system from the console by typing in 10 and pressing enter. If you don't have access to a monitor, you can follow these same steps on the TrueNAS GUI shell, located at the bottom of the left menu, and type again. We'll have this command listed in the description below. Next, we'll show you how to set the static IP address on the GUI's network settings. Go to Network, then click Network Summary. Here is a list of your active interfaces along with the IP address. Take a screenshot or make a note of this in case you need to refer back to the network information. Now go to Network, and then Interfaces, to see your active interfaces and the current settings. If you see Yes under DHCP, that means you have a dynamic IP address set up currently. Click the arrow on the right side, then click Edit to configure this interface's IP address. Uncheck the DHCP box to turn off automatically choosing an IP address. Note that only one interface can be configured for DHCP at a time. Under IP addresses, go ahead and change your IP address that falls into the range of your network router or switch. The default netmask of slash 24 is recommended. You can add another IP address if you wish to have multiples. Once you're finished, click Apply. It'll ask you to test the changes before making the configuration permanent. In the pop-up dialog, go ahead and check Confirm, then click Test Changes. You now have 60 seconds to see if the IP address and configuration works. Go to a new browser window and test out the new IP address to see if the TrueNAS GUI loads. If you are OK with making this a permanent setting, click Save Changes. Note that if you change your IP, you can only save it as a permanent change from the new IP address, as your original IP will be disabled temporarily for 60 seconds. If you don't save the settings within 60 seconds, your IP will revert back to the original. Thanks for watching this tutorial video. Make sure to visit ixsystems.com to learn more about TrueNAS and IX systems. Be sure to check out our other tutorial videos on our YouTube channel, and don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Don't forget to click the bell to receive alerts on new videos. Whether you need software-defined storage, enterprise-grade support with high availability, or scale-out multi-node management, TrueNAS has a complete storage solution that fits virtually any application and budget. Visit TrueNAS.com to see why millions of individuals and businesses depend on TrueNAS to keep their data safe and secure.